I want to speak a message this morning. Uh, you know, this is a real departure from something that I would maybe, you know, be inclined to speak on. But uh, as I was really inquiring of the Lord, I felt the Lord say to speak on conquering fear. Conquering fear. So we're going to talk about that. So Lord, I pray that the word of the Lord would run swiftly this morning, that your glory would rain down. Every heart, every life be touched, transformed. Take us from glory to glory. Take us into new levels of your presence and new levels of destiny in Jesus' name. Well, there is a good kind of fear that the Bible talks about, and it's the fear of God. And that is, for example, in Psalm 89, it says this, God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints and to be held in reverence by all around him. Isaiah 8, 13, the Lord of hosts, him shall you hallow. And let him be your fear. Let him be your dread. Whoa. That means that that word in Hebrew is uh, mura, meaning reverence, awe, a condition of the heart that has deep respect for the Lord. And uh, Psalm 111 talks about that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So we want to have a, a godly honor and reverence for the Lord of hosts. Yes, he is your daddy, and yes, he is your friend, but also remember, he's the God of the universe. Somebody say amen. Come on. We are to awe and to reverence this holy, perfect, awesome God. He's not a genie, you know, that out of a bottle, but he is the God of the universe. It's amazing. Luke 12, Jesus has these contrasting words to say. He says this, I say to you, my friends, do not be afraid of those that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. But I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him who after he has killed is the power to cast into hell. Yes, I say fear him. Now who is that? Does Satan have the, the ability to cast into hell? Actually, technically, no. Who does? God. God. If we don't know God, there has to be a godly fear and honor in this earth. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And how much better to do it now as opposed to that day when he splits the sky or when you leave this planet. And uh, so there's a, and then he goes on to say, are not five sparrows sold for two copper coins? And one of them is not before, be forgotten before God. Your hairs of your head are numbered, Jesus said. Do not fear, therefore, you are more valuable than the sparrow. So what he's saying, fear God, but he's saying don't fear for your provision or don't fear as long as we are in God and we have this relationship with him. We do not have to fear him in the sense of being cast into hell. But we, there is a need for godly fear in the earth. Now, you know, there's an interesting passage here in Revelation 2.10. I want to read this because this is one of the uh, letters to one of the churches. And by the way, it's to the church in Smyrna. Now, let's see who knows. What is modern-day Smyrna? Who can yell it out to me? It's in Turkey. It is Izmir. Izmir, Turkey is the modern day city for what was called Smyrna. Now, interesting because here the angel to the church of Smyrna writes these things and says this, I know that your, your tribulation and poverty, and it says in verse 10, do not fear any of these things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested and you will have tribulation. Be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life. Do you know right now, this moment, there are Partners in Harvest pastors in prison in Izmir, Turkey, in this very city where this word was written to in the, what was uh, previously called Smyrna. Their names are uh, Andrew and Noreen Brunson, who are Partners in Harvest pastors in prison right now. Now, we're, Lord, we pray for their release. Amen. <laughs> Here from Toronto, we cry out for those amazing pastors. They're Americans who have been in Turkey for 20 years laboring uh, in that mission field. And they've just, Turkey's been really changing, but they've just been thrown into prison actually two weeks ago, so they're still there. But interesting, because this passage, how relevant is that for them? Do not fear even persecution. Do not fear what they could do to your body, Jesus said. Don't fear that. I will be with you. You know, I, I read the book of the heavenly man 
uh, you know, maybe you've read that book of the, the, he was severely persecuted in China and how he said there's a special grace when you are under dire persecution. Isn't that incredible? His legs were broken. He was beaten. He was severely, and, and he was severely uh, whipped and whatnot. But he said, he said, you know, sometimes I miss that. Isn't that incredible? He's now in America. He said, sometimes I miss that special level of grace that comes when you are being beaten for the name of Jesus or when you're being persecuted for the name of Jesus. It's like he said, I would feel it. And, and he got healed his legs. And it's a miraculous story. It's a great book, by the way, Heavenly Man, of how he walked out of that prison. Come on. We are not even to fear those who could potentially kill us because God is on our side. Somebody say amen. Amen. I don't know how you face death without knowing Jesus. That would be something to be afraid of. That would be a severe thing. The Oxford definition for fear is a painful emotion caused by impending danger or evil. Fear is an unconscious reaction that's created by anxiety towards the conditions commonly caused by undesirable occurrences of the past. So undesirable occurrences of the past. For example, if you've been bitten by a dog, you may be more liable to fear dogs. Now, anxiety is this, a state of uneasiness and apprehension as about future uncertainties. Now, what really struck out to me, stuck out to me the one time when I was listening to the story, I think I've told you about this before, but Bill Weiss is a businessman who was, calls himself a nominal Christian, but he was taken out of his body one night into hell, and he was there, uh, call it 23 Minutes in Hell, that's the name of his book, because he uh, woke up screaming at 23 minutes after three, and when he was taken out of his body, he looked at the clock and it was three o'clock. Anyways, he talks about all these things about what he experienced in that place. Gracefully, the Lord brought him back to his body again. And he talked about the fear, the terror, amongst many other things. And all the things he experienced were in the Bible, 400 different scriptures that talk about hell. But he talked about how, okay, this is real life, getting back to real life. When he was younger, he was surfing off the beach of Florida when all of a sudden a great white shark had come and bit the leg of a guy that they were surfing with. And all of a sudden, he and his friends were scrambling to the shore and he's on his long board. And this shark comes and knocks him off the board and actually uh, grabbed his foot. And he thought, that's it, I'm dead, this is it, my life is, is over. And miraculously, the shark let him go. And do you know what he said this? He said, I have never been so afraid in my life as that moment. He said, except for in this experience in hell where he said, I would say it was a thousand times worse, the fear that he felt in hell. Now, that is a real place. Now, this isn't my sermon today, but I just want to say, I want to preach it. This is reality. There is a heaven and there is a hell. And we want to plunder hell and populate heaven. Amen. We want to see as many people as possible. Hallelujah. For the ones that came forward today. This is reality. And the fear, you know, that that they experience there. Because, you see, Satan wants us to be afraid. He wants us to be afraid. He wants us to be fearful. And I want to talk about that in a minute. But by the way, do you know fear is connected to many physical conditions? You, your body can turn in on itself if you have a lot of fear. It can actually cause ulcers. It can be connected to different diseases. Somebody I know was count, um, diagnosed with, with cancer and has been going through cancer treatments. But it was interesting because even his doctor said to him, you need to go get some counseling and deal with the emotional issues in your life. Isn't that interesting? Deal with forgiveness. Deal with, you know, letting, letting go things that you've held on to because that is affecting your body. Come on, church. You want to get rid of these things for many reasons, but one of them is also how it can turn on your very body and shorten your life. So it's like sometimes we can be inclined to just like, well, you know, that's always, always been, or well, that's just the way, that's the way my mother was. Well, it stops today in Jesus' name. The acronym FEAR has been said, F-E-A-R, false evidence appearing real. Because sometimes, many times, what we fear is actually, it it doesn't come to pass. It's just anxiety, you know, things that, oh, what could be, what could be, what could be. Many times it's false. It is false. The enemy just wants us to be afraid. I want to say this about children at night. You know, um, sometimes some of you may have children that are afraid at night or afraid of the dark or or, or whatever, and um, that's something we really want to pray about. But I just want to say this, I felt like God said to say this, that 
Don't just assume that your, ch your child who is afraid at night doesn't see anything where you say, oh, that's not real. You don't see that. I, I say that because I saw stuff as a child. I literally saw demonic stuff with my eyes, with my natural eyes. Now, there was some things in the family farm when I grew up. There was some seance stuff that went on, I think, in First Nations. Uh, seances that went on in the family farm generations past. So there were some things, I think there was open doors, but I remember thinking, don't tell me this isn't real because I am really seeing something here. Now there, it was a gift also that God was trying to say, you know, see in the spirit realm, see the good, but I used to see the bad. I used to see the demonic. And so I needed training and healing, but I, I just want to say this because it is very real to that child. That child feels that. So this is important to pray through. And it's important to also get rid of any legal rights the enemy has in your home. Come on. Maybe some of us need to do a spiritual sweeping. Get rid of that music. Get rid of that movie. Get rid of any artifacts that, you know, potentially are not uh, of God. That there may be something demonic. You know, we do this every so often. Just kind of spiritually cleanse our house and pray through our house. And if our kids for some reason are having bad dreams and... And uh, Sarah, who is hosting up here, she does a great job of teaching on dreams. But do you know that sometimes nightmares can be the cry of an unhealed heart? That heart that's been traumatized or that heart that, that has a, a, a wounding that may come out in a dream at night. And so the heart is saying, I need to deal. I need to be healed. I need to, I need to see this come to the surface. So we don't want to just, you know, ignore and, and go on, but ask the Holy Spirit to come into that fear. Fear is the opposite of faith. And God is calling us to rise up as faith. Sometimes a spirit, uh, it's a spirit, sometimes is a spirit of fear. It's a demonic spirit of fear. It can afflict a person. You know, I don't know how many of you know this online uh, it's not we watch it online we don't have a tv but we there's a series called survivor anybody know what i'm talking about survivor it's a reality <laughs> okay here is a plug for survivor anyways it's where people go on to a an island and they have to survive for 40 days or so and they can vote off people uh anyways it's it's really good clean the producers are christian tv reality series but it's interesting because there's a guy on that s series right now and this guy is literally afraid of everything. I'm like, how did he ever get on Survivor? This is a deserted island, you know? He's afraid of, of butterflies. He's afraid of death. He's afraid of, of every kind of insect you could imagine. And you just think, whoa, you know, that is a, a good example of a spirit of fear. Now, a friend of mine in the U.S. just was telling me uh, recently that there was a guy that she knows that she was kept trying to minister to and saying, because he kept being afraid of death. And he just, he would say, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. And she was like, stop saying that. You know, stop saying that. Let's pray. You know, stop professing this. And so she was trying to minister to this guy and trying to minister to this guy. Do you want to know what happened two Saturdays ago? The guy died in his chair, in the living room. No explanation. Now, what is that? Sometimes, you know, if we're so given to a fear of something, that's the very thing we will get. Come on, I'm talking to somebody here today. Again, this is not my topic to speak on. I'm trusting that God has got something up his sleeve this morning. You know, we did have a, 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 one of our daughters who was really struggling with, like, the fear of spiders. And that tends to be, uh, you know, calm, and, and we're going to go over some of the fears today. But, you know, it's almost, like, unbelievable how she could uh, identify spiders. It's like, we wouldn't see them, but she's like, there's a spider up there. And then we're like, oh, my, what? I have to get out my magnifying glass to see this. But, yeah, you're right. There is a spider there. Or she would look out the window and say, there's a spider in the tree. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. How does she see all the spiders? Come on, if that, the thing that is before you is the thing that will kind of uh, obsess you. Come on, what are you putting in front of your eyes? You know, what are we putting in front of us? But God, hallelujah, we sent her for RTF, hallelujah for RTF. Where's the RTF? Uh, restoring the foundations, ministers, healing people, sozo people. There was advanced sozo this morning, it was our, this weekend, awesome. Can you guys stand up, sozo people? Juanita's here in the front, stand up. You're a healing person, you do sozo, you do RTF. Look around, hallelujah, that our church has got lots of these people because these are ones that are gifted particularly in, um, in ministering. Thank you. I got sozoed yesterday. Woohoo! 
because uh, uh, with one of the Top Guns, I need one of the Top Guns from Reading to Sozo Me. But anyways, it was great. Another level of healing. Another level of freedom. How many are up for that? Come on, church. We've not arrived yet. I've not arrived yet. John Nutt Sozo too is awesome. So this spirit of fear can be the thing uh, that, that we see. Now, panic attacks. Panic attacks are sudden periods of intense fear that may include palpitation, sweating, shaking, shortness of breath, numbness, or feeling that something really bad is going to happen. And uh, this can occur in minutes, and they may be a fear of losing control or chest pain. Do you know 11% of Americans suffer from panic attacks? It's more frequent in women than in men and tends to happen with people with an above average intelligence. I was reading a story in Guy Post magazine of a TV anchor, forget her name, but a TV anchor in America who had suffered panic attacks right from childhood. And she would try to compensate with alcohol, how alcohol would numb the panic attacks. And she became slowly a closet alcoholic and actually would stop at the bar on the way home and she just confessed all this stuff in this national magazine. It was amazing. And she just said, my freedom came from God. And she came, when I began to focus on God, even now, she said, there's still times where sometimes that tries to come and I pray and I focus on the Lord and how she got free. This is also common amongst post-traumatic stress disorder people, but many people can suffer from panic attacks again something that God is saying he wants to deal with. Well, what are some of the open doors? Some of the open doors can be generational. Your mother had anxiety. It can be that's a generational open door into your life or into our lives if there's something generational. Experiences, as we talked about, if you've had an experience like the veterans and post-traumatic stress syndrome or, or some traumatic event. I saw a car accident yesterday. It was, it was horrible. This dear lady, I felt so bad for her, but we had to keep the traffic moving. But you could see that she likely had really cracked her head on the, on the, uh, on the steering wheel. But you see, that's a traumatic event. So sometimes, you know, we need uh, healing for trauma, healing for things that have happened in our childhood. And I remember, like, I, I trained horses when I, when I grew up. I love horses and worked with them a lot. And I remember whenever I got kicked off that horse, whenever I get thrown off that horse, I knew I had to get right back on that horse. Because it was like I didn't want to give in to that fear of, of not, you know, getting back up. Sometimes it would be painful, but get right back on that horse. Open doors such as horror movies or witchcraft or willful sin. I want to talk for a moment about horror movies. Ho! Oh. <laughs> um, do you know that uh, in the camp, I don't know, some of you know that I was, I was talked into becoming camp nurse at the youth camp this summer. I don't know how I got talked into that. It was the one week that John and I were not going to have kids at home because uh, Phoebe was gone another camp. And we were like, oh, a week with no kids. This is going to be the first time ever. And then I'm asked to be camp nurse. And I'm like, God, please tell me no, right? The answer is no, right, God? But I felt I should pray about it. He said, yeah, I want you to go to camp. And I'm like, oh, God. Here I am at youth camp with like 60 youth uh, as camp nurse. But you know, Thursday night, the Holy Spirit hit. It was incredible. And I just look back, and um, they, they go out now, but I tell you, some of the faces you saw here this morning, those kids got so transformed. We still hear the testimonies of how uh, they're so transformed. But I remember, like, these kids, some of them were writhing on the floor like a snake. It was like deliverance, de sovereign deliverance, a sovereign move of God. I were praying for this one kid and saying, God, help us to get him free. Help us to get, what, what's the deal here? And the Lord said, horror movies. We said, um, hey, have you been watching horror movies? He said, yeah, I watch them all the time. I said, okay, we need to confess and repent of this. So he did, and that's when there's something demonic came off of him. Can I just say, like a mother in the house today right now, watch what your kids are watching. Hello. You know, I looked it up and thought, why do people see scary movies? Like, what's the deal? And this is what I found, is that it's a desire for intense emotions, the adrenaline rush. It is where some people like to watch them because they want to vicariously experience complex and extreme emotional content. The only problem with a lot of these horror movies out there is they're demonic in origin. Hello? I remember doing prophetic evangelism uh, years ago, and there was this guy that was just like, uh, he was, you know, he said, I'm an atheist, you know, 
I don't want to have anything to do with you guys, basically. And we said, well, you know, give us a chance because, you know, you're not going to be an atheist by the time we are through with you. <laughs> Anyways, but one of the words that the Lord gave us is, uh, you watched the movie Exorcist and you haven't been able to sleep since. He's like, how'd you know that? I said, well, I didn't know that. God knew that. Do you know this? He said it. He says, it's true. I watched The Exorcist, horrible, scare, horrible horror movie, by the way. And something demonic had come and he w wasn't able to sleep since that time. Well, we prayed for this guy. The atheist became Christian. Hallelujah. And, uh, but <clears throat> something kind of registered there for me. I thought, you know, that is an open door, church. There's an open door through horror movies. By the way, I don't know if you know this name, actor Heath Ledger. Heath Ledger, who was the actor, uh, the Joker, in the movie called The Dark Knight, which I did not see. However, I did read about how Heath Ledger, since he portrayed the Joker, he couldn't sleep after that. It's like he said there was something about that character. So he began to take, you know, um, sleeping medication and, and different uh, anxiety medications, such to the degree that Heath Ledger accidentally overdosed and died. Some of you know that story. There is a reality to the fact that that can be an open door. An open door. There can be the fear of man. The fear of man that can afflict us. Proverbs 29, 25 says, the fear of man brings a snare. But whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. Do you know what the exact center of the Bible is? I think I've said this before. The exact center verse of the Bible, who knows where it is? Psalm 118, it comes right after the shortest chapter in the Bible, which is Psalm 117, and it comes right before the longest chapter in the Bible, which is Psalm 119, and by the way, it's Psalm 118, verse 8, so that's 1188, and do you know that there's 1188, 1188 verses prior to that verse, and 1188 verses after that verse, isn't that incredible? And John Arnott, uh, he's going to speak here in December, but he's got this amazing preach lately about how all the, uh, the mathematical sequences in the Bible, I mean, nobody could orchestrate the way that the Bible is written but God himself. You know, sequences of seven, maybe you've read the Bible code and oh my goodness. But anyways, the very middle verse of the Bible, do you think it's important? It says, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in men. May the fear of man be crushed that the fear of God would rise up. Now, that fear of man can keep us from our destiny. Come on. Matthew 25 talks about the parable of the talents and the, the one that got one talent. What did he do? He buried it in fear. And he said, you know, I was afraid and I hid your talent. And what was the words he heard? You wicked and lazy servant. That wasn't pleasing to the Lord. You know, I... I remember, you know, the, the, the very thing of fear can hold you back from, sometimes the thing that you fear is the very thing that is to be a gifting on your life. And I, I was in grade seven, I, I stood up to read a passage of scripture, I uh, started Christian school, uh, and I, I couldn't believe it. I was asked by the teacher to read this passage, I couldn't get a word out. My face went red, a frog in my throat, and I, uh, 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 and I sat down so embarrassed. And, from, and then the, this whisper, you can't pub speak in public. That is, that is definitely not for you. And I was afraid to speak in public. Another common fear, by the way. Do you know, how many know I've, I got rid of that one? Hallelujah. <laughs> but I lived that way for years. I got out of every public speaking event in church or in, in school. I put somebody else forward or I was sick that day or whatever. See, the very thing that God wanted me to do, the enemy tried to make me be afraid of. And so, again, we, you know, head on face these fears and say, you will not have dominion over me. You will not have dominion over me. How about fear of intimacy? I felt like I had a word of knowledge during worship that somebody has a fear of marriage. Whoa. I had a fear of intimacy too, by the way. I was just, you know, it was like, open your heart, you know, be vulnerable. It was like, oh my goodness, you know, that was all foreign. I tried to hold my heart tight. But you're not going to have a, a great relationship with people if you don't have fear of intimacy. But somebody has a fear of marriage, and I feel like God wants to deal with that. Maybe you've been supposed to propose a long time ago. I don't know who needs that, but there you go. If it's a godly woman, then go ahead and propose, okay? Fear of missing out, FOMO. FOMO, fear of missing out. Do you know that the fear of missing out has been tr uh, greatly propagated by social media? 
Come on. You know, my 23-year-old daughter said to me, she said, Mom, I just want you to know that when I was like a teenager, uh, like now we have three teenagers of our youngest three daughters, she said it was a lot uh, easier for me than it is for them. Because she said in social media, there's such a propagation of you're missing out. You know, that person that's traveling the world, or they got great clothes, or that party, you know, you're ready to sit at home and eat popcorn, and you go on social media and they're like, oh, there's a party, I'm, oh, I'm missing out. Come on. It can actually morph into feeling like you're missing out on life, propagated by social media. It's a very real ungodly fear. And it's like, you know, all the cool people or the cool whatever. Yeah, I really believe that God wants to deal with this. You need to live your life. Hello. You need to live the life that God has given you. You know, the coolest place to be is in the center of God's will. And yeah, you know, maybe you do need to get off the couch. I don't know. But, but I recommend that we don't be afraid of missing out all the time or, you know, what's going on. I, I, it's interesting because... Um, you know, being a little vulnerable here, it, part of my sozo yesterday had to do with the, you know, the club, you know, being, I, I was, I was not the popular uh, kid in my school by far, I was not the favored daughter by far in my family, I was the, I was the, my, my sister, she got parachuters coming out of the sky at her wedding and, and all this, you know, huge weddings and my brothers got cars and farms and I paid for my own wedding, you know, I, there's a lot of inner healing there, don't feel sorry for me because God is really, <laughs> done a lot. Thank you, Lord. Paid for my own wedding, paid for my own cars, paid for my own way through university. I was like, oh. But you know, in the, in the Lord was another level of, hey, you're in my club, Jesus was saying yesterday. You're in my club. Come on, how many want to be in Jesus's club? I love Jesus's club. He's so nice. <laughs> Jesus doesn't exclude you from his club. Somebody say hallelujah. I'm in the cool club because I'm in Jesus's club. Wow. Top things. This is one list of top 10 things people are afraid of. Number one, public speaking. Number two, heights. Number three, going to the dentist. Number four, snakes. Number five, flying. Six, spiders and insects. Number seven, enclosed spaces. Number eight, mice. Number nine, dogs. And number 10, thunder and lightning. Okay, now here is also, there's a different list, this is a, li a list of the top 100 phobias. How many know there is more than 100 phobias in the world? Oh my goodness, who would have thought? Well, listen to this, number one phobia, it is uh, uh, arachnophobia, the fear of spiders, affecting women four times more than men. Opniophobia, the fear of snakes. People who avoid places. How many are afraid to go to Africa because they're snakes? Guess what? Jesus, I love Heidi Baker, and she says these black mamba snakes. She's like, I just take the machete and I cut their heads off and I hold them up and say, ah. I was like, that woman is fearless. I remember looking down the toilet on outreach. There's like these moving things. <laughs> Jesus, don't let me fall down there, please, Jesus. I was like, fall down there. God will protect you from snakes, okay? Remember Paul shook it off, right? Shook it off, come on, in the fire, it wasn't affected. Okay, we got arachnophobia, the fear of heights, that's, um, and then argophobia is number four, the fear of open or crowded spaces, people won't leave their home who have this phobia. Sinophobia, the fear of dogs, there's astrophobia, the fear of lightning or thunder, claustrophobia, of course, the fear of small spaces. Uh, mysophobia, the fear of germs. It's also called germophobia or bacteriophobia. Aerophobia, the fear of flying. 25 million Americans share a fear of flying. I was sitting next to somebody who was having a panic attack on a plane uh, one time, and I'm like, hey, I, I, I'm going to pray for you. I'm a Christian. I started praying for her and praying for her, and you know, she began to, to, to really dial down. But wow, that was very real. This woman was all about to faint from fear. Uh, trifophobia, the fear of holes. Isn't that interesting? The fear of holes. That's a very common fear. Carcinophobia, the fear of cancer. Uh, Atherophobia, the fear of death. Glossophobia, the fear of public speaking. Uh, all these different ones. And then right up to, guess what number 100 is? 100 on the phobia list is tapophobia, the fear of being buried alive. Oh my goodness. By mistake, it says. And waking up in a coffin. Maybe that's a dream somebody's had. Come on. God wants to set us free of all phobias. How many agree? 
I will not live my life based on phobias. What is the Lord saying? Freedom from fear. Fear is not one of the fruit of the Spirit. So number one, confession and repentance. Do you know that we need to see fear for what it is? Sin, really sin. It's the opposite of faith. James 5, 16, confess your sins one to another. Pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Our Proverbs 28, 13, he who covers his sins will not prosper, or confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. Do you want to know one of the fears that I had that was uh, something I never wanted to speak out? It was this. It was the fear of committing adultery. And the reason being is because I have that, you know, in some family members. And so I was just like, oh, God, oh, God. And it was a, legit, it was a fear. And I'm like, I don't want to tell anybody that I have the fear of committing adultery because I don't want them to think I'm thinking about committing adultery. You know, so I'm like, you know, uh. and, and, and even though I, I did talk to John, but it was like the Lord said, no, I remember being at this healing session one time, like it was a group of people. And it was like the Lord said, now's the time to confess that fear. And I was like, oh my goodness, God, you got to be kidding. But I, but I did. I just confessed it to somebody said, look, I've got this fear and, eh. and they prayed for me and it was instantly gone. And it was like, I never had it again. And I was thinking, why did I dwell for years with that fear? Come on. Do you know, meaning that when it's in secret or when you don't share it or the enemy loves to dwell in secret. He wants you to cover it up and not confess it or, 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 you know, not be real or vulnerable because there's an empowerment of the fear when it is kept in secret. And I was instantly free when I confessed it and got prayer and it was off. And that's what the Lord wants to do this morning, I believe. Healing. There may be need for generational deliverance from fear. Sometimes the healing of memories of the fearful experiences or breaking of lies, such as lies that, you know, people reject me, fear of failure. Fear of, uh, of rejection, fear of, uh, of mistakes, you know, don't want to step out because you don't want to make a mistake. And we need to repent of those lies and repent of the, uh, our alignment. Heaven and hell are both looking for human agreement. Who are you going to agree with, God or that demonic fear? And there is, uh, it says this in 1 John 4, 18, perfect love casts out fear. Because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. There is no fear in love. The love of God filling us and freeing us from whatever fear. Fear of lack. Fear of the future. Fear of financial failure. How many know? Come on. If God knows the number of hairs in your head, he will provide for you. He will take care of you. He will be faithful to the end. You know, my mom confessed to me one time. She says, you know, she's 80. Four, I think. And she said, you know, I, what's death? You know, like she's a strong believer, but it's like fear of death. I don't know how many think about that. Think about the fear of death. What will it be like? What would it be like? What will it be like? And I said, you know, mom, I think it'll be kind of like, you know, when, when, when you're born and that baby in the womb, baby doesn't realize exactly what's going on, but you know, they're squeezing or whatever, but that baby comes out and and, and it's like the new life, and it's, it's all new, and it's all different. But I said, Mom, the God who is faithful to birth you will be the God who is faithful to take you home again without fear. We can face the future without fear. Death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? Come on. He has conquered the grave. He has conquered death. We have nothing to fear. Be absent in the bodies to be present with the Lord. And to war. Number three, it is written, Jesus said to the devil. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Do you know what I think part of the problem is? That we don't resist the devil enough. Come on. You know, it's like, oh, you are just receiving stuff. No, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Spirit of God in you, resist him. Resist anger. Resist that temptation to do this or do that or whatever. Resist him. Resist fear, and he will flee from you. And here's a good verse to meditate on, 2 Timothy 1.7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I even read in a secular source of healing for phobia, phobias, a secular source, and they had listed there, read the Bible. I was like shocked. But it says, it says it's proven. And they also talk about hypnotherapy, psychotherapy, systematic desensitization. But it says it, it is proven that turning to the Bible is a way of relieving anxiety and facing your fears. Wow, it's awesome. And I love what Joyce Meyer said when she said, 
If you're afraid of doing something, you know, especially what God has called you to do, do it afraid. Just do it afraid. Just do it. And you will see that fear melts away. Let's all stand together. Can I have the worship team come back up? Philippians 4, verse 6, speaking of anxiety, be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are a good report, if there's any virtue in anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. God, we want to get our minds on you and break, see the breaking of the power of fear. Oh. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. You know, I just want us to, for a moment, if you don't mind, just, just keep standing. Let's, let's sing this song first. You make me brave. He makes us brave. Whatever the assignment that God has given us, he's anointed us to do that very thing. What the enemy wants us to think, we're going to fail, we're going to fall on our face, going to make mistakes. God is saying this morning, I'm anointing you to conquer every obstacle. Let's sing this.
If you would like prayer for fear of any kind, I want you to just come to the front. Just come up here. Just run up here. It's not who prays for you. It's the Lord. God is going to deal with fears today. Fear of failure. Fear of mistake. Fear of man. Fear of intimacy. Fear of whatever. Fear of stepping out. Fear of risking every type, every kind. Fear of missing out. Fear of missing it. Come Holy Spirit, break in. Break in by your power and your glory. Break in your might this morning, oh God. You're going to set us free from everything and anything that the enemy has caused to hold us back from the full measure of joy, the full measure of destiny, the full measure of walking in this calling that you have for us, this extraordinary destiny. Say this with me, in Jesus' name, I renounce and I break my agreement with fear of any kind. You leave me now, in Jesus' name, anxiety, you go. Every fear at the cross today, I receive faith. You make me brave. You anoint me to do what I'm called to do. I say yes, Jesus. Freedom. In Jesus' name, freedom, freedom, freedom. We break the spirit of fear. We break everything of fear. You go. Every phobia, every fear binds you, cancel you off. In Jesus' name, up and out, up and out, up and out. By the natural breath, fear, you are broken. Anxiety, you are broken. In Jesus' name, every generational spirit of fear, every generational spirit of anxiety, go now. In Jesus' name, you go now. You go now. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, freedom, 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 freedom. Freedom, 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 freedom. Every string is cut. Every puppet on a string. We break that in Jesus' name. Freedom, freedom, freedom. Sing this. Sing it to him. You make me 
bizarre thought, but I'm gonna go with it. I just, I want, can we make a space? I feel like there's people here, like it's, it's like I feel for some of you, you gotta get in the race. Get in the race of your calling. Get in the race of your destiny. Some of you, you've been called to go places and do things that fear has held you back. And I know this is bizarre, but I feel like there's going to be a, uh, a prophetic act of run around this building. I know that's weird. I, so I just feel for some of you, I don't know, you need to start running. You need to start running. It's a prophetic sign. Maybe some of the school of ministry students, once you start it, just begin to run. Literally run. Come on, literally run. Because God is saying, get in the race. Get in the race of your destiny. Get in the race of your calling. Come on. Be released. Go, 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 go. No fear holds you back anymore. There's a go calling. There's a go anointing. There's a go. Come on. Go forward, action, action, action. Out of fear, out of captivity, out of the straitjacket. You can go this way too. Nothing's gonna hold me back any longer. I'm saying yes. I fought the good fight. I finished the race. I fought the good fight. There's a crown of righteousness stored up. I'm getting in the race. I'm getting in my calling. I'm getting in my destiny. Nothing's gonna hold me back any longer. give a shout anybody that has the the shofar blow the shofar Jesus again shout Jesus Come on, give somebody a hug. Just love up on somebody. Oh, some earrings. <laughs> somebody lost their earring. Yay! Come on, you are running so hard. That's awesome. Give somebody a hug. Come on, fire of God upon you. Let the river of God flow through you. Don't miss next week. That'll be a phenomenal speaker next week. Be blessed. Momentum Conference this weekend. Fire of God, fire of God.